Good morning, United Methodist Church of Westlake Village. Good to have everybody ready to do some worship. I feel bad for this section. It's, it's, that it's a, lonely, a lonely thing over here, but you know what? I can turn and pivot and reach everybody. Uh, this is a special day. First of all, it's special for me because I'm back from vacation. I had a lot of... Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we had a lot of good speakers while I was gone. I'm appreciative of Linda and Rick for uh, filling in and letting, uh, uh, you know, filling us in about their own faith journey and their own uh, uh, walk with God. I, I also was uh, appreciative that Pastor Garth was here, our district superintendent. Uh, I understand that I need to get a few more amens out of y'all. <laughs> right? More amens out of y'all. All right, this is, this is a goal that I am uh, committed to, uh, but we are welcoming back the children's choirs here today, so that's very exciting. Yeah, we can give you guys some class. Thank you for being here. This is super exciting, and our own adult choir is back today, too, uh, you know? Very appreciative that uh, this is an exciting day. Uh, added to that, we have a Hot Dog Sunday today just to create a little spirit as summer is ending. And uh, uh, so that is very, very fun, very, very exciting. A couple more announcements. We do have the CPR class that is Wednesday evening, so you can sign up for that with Carol Ames. Uh, and then uh, other announcement, we have a presentation uh, from Chris Saltow. He's going to be talking about the refugee program. Uh, he told me he's got a good 20 minutes. I told him maybe one or two, if that's all right. Yeah, Chris, come on up. Morning. We at United Methodist Church, Westlake Village, as the founder and member of the Caneo Interfaith Refugee Team, are having a drive for items for welcome baskets for new refugees. I've brought with me a sample welcome basket. Uh, it's a bathroom welcome basket, which along with kitchen and cleaning baskets will be delivered to a new refugee family by the team. And you can see some of the items, Kleenex, toothpaste, uh, towels, etc. The team was founded here at this church about eight years ago with, with Pastor Brian. It includes volunteers from temples and churches from the Conejo and Simi Valleys. And refugees are individuals who are legally allowed in and welcome to the USA because of significant persecution and or conflict in their home country. And many of the refugee families we help are from Ukraine and Afghanistan. When a new family is settled, we, the team, furnish their apartments with donated furniture and supplies like these very important welcome kits. Your friends, like Gary Evans, who helps store donations, Boyd Donovan, who along with Gary, Tim Bonds, myself, and many others, help deliver the furniture, and Nancy Moravec, helps provide leadership to the team. We are getting very low on these welcome kits and all the faith groups who are part of the team are joining with us to work together to replenish our supply, but we need you. You can help by going online to see the Sign Up Genius or by stopping by our table on the patio to see what the needs are and how you can help by donating. Maybe you, your family, or with friends could donate a whole basket, that would be great but individual items are great also. And we're gonna be on the patio with this, a donation basket every Sunday from now through October 6th. Uh, and on October 14th at Welcome Hall, Elton Hall will be assembling the, the basket, hopefully with members of this church and the many faith groups, and you're welcome to attend that. So the sign up link for this, for Sign Up Genius is in the Covenant on the Friday Blast and at our table. And last week, Pastor Garth told us about grit and resilience. And let me assure you that refugee families have incredible true grit and resilience. They have to or they could not survive. So we at UMCWV can show our grit and our compassion by helping furnish their homes by signing up and donating to the Welcome Basket Drive. Thank you, God bless, and amen.
All right, thank you, Chris. Uh, you know, we just feel it's an important to remind folks that we exist for a reason, that for us to get closer to God, uh, and a lot of that is through mission work like that, for looking uh, to those who are in need of resources and doing our best to be able to provide them. Uh, I will remind you that our flowers this morning are from Laura Bentleff. She is celebrating her sister Margot's birthday, and we have extra flowers. We celebrated the life of Charlotte Sheldon yesterday, and uh, it was a good experience, good time with family. Uh, we have flowers that are in the narthex that came from her memorial yesterday, so we celebrate that as well. Uh, just a quick introduction to the message today. You know, we're talking about bread again, and we've been talking about bread a lot this summer. Uh, we're going to try and figure out even more what Jesus was trying to talk about with this bread stuff. So if you like bread, you should stay. That's what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. Friends, uh, our choir is going to be getting ready. Are you guys ready to, to, to perform? You ready to go? Are you excited? Because we're excited. You guys are going to be really, really fun and bring such life. Yeah. group the last year, I have some certificates for them that I was going to um, give them. And I'm, I'm so appreciative to all the families who have um, brought their kids to be a part of this program. Um, the new choir names are a little bit different. Um, the, the organization has turned into an organization called As One Harmony. It's a nonprofit that I literally just launched. Um, there is a website. If you go to asoneharmony.org, you can check it out. But these kids have been through a full year with me. Um, except for our newest friend, Reef. So hello, Reef. Um, so I'm gonna hand out these certificates and I'm so appreciative again to the families. Okay, so the first one is for Blythe. You're welcome. Then we have Isla and Vera. There we go. And Max. There we go. Wyatt. And Dominic. Every year that you guys finish choir, you will get a sticker that you can put on here that says you've accomplished another year. Olivia, where are you? Olivia. Ah, oh, there she is. <laughs> the cute ears. Okay, Casey. And we have Tesla. <laughs> Very good. So you'll never have to get another certificate. You can just keep this one and just add to it every year. Here we go. 
and Ethan. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, Melina, Pip, <laughs> Wesley, ooh, Harry, and Gavin. And we're actually missing 10 of our friends that we will give another, another day. Malia, <laughs> Jojo, the wonderful Jojo, okay. And Reef, you will get one next year, okay? When you complete, I know, I know, but you know what, you're gonna get one soon, okay? Yes, and it'll be on your wall. Yeah, you gotta stay with us though and keep singing. Okay, you're gonna keep singing? You were amazing today, Reef. Okay, thank you, and then I think they're gonna do the backpack blessing, so if you kids just come over here if you want, this is optional, you can do that, and if not, you can go back and sit with your families. Okay, so um, those of you who are gonna come over here, come sit. Okay, all right, come on over here for the backpack blessing. Come on up, kids, if you brought your backpack, and even if you didn't, I want you to come on up and join us here. Yeah, go ahead and grab it, Dominic. Yeah. Come on up. Have a seat up here. I see a lot of backpacks. Come on up. Plenty of space for you all. Come on up here. <laughs> yeah, and you can bring your certificate, too. <laughs> Come on up. Did everyone grab your backpacks and come on up? I see a backpack back there. Is that anybody's? Gavin, did you want to get your backpack? It's right there. Oh, there we go. Miss Nancy will help us. OK. Look at you all, with your backpacks and your certificates. Congratulations on having a whole year of choir. That was amazing. Yay! <laughs> all right, so we all have our backpacks. Some of us have them, some of us don't. But we're all starting a new school year together, right? Some of you have already been in school a while. Some of you just started, and I know some of you haven't even started yet. But we're all starting a new year, and it's exciting, but sometimes it could be a little scary. We might have new teachers. We might have different kids in our classes. We might even have to go to a different school. And some of you who are homeschool, you still have changes too, right? You might have a different schedule. You might have different classes you're doing. So all of us have something new that we're adjusting to. And we know that it's a, it's a fun time, but also it makes you a little bit nervous. So we want you to remember God is with you during this time, but also this whole church. We all care about you all. We all are praying for you and thinking of you. And we want you to have a great school year. So I'm going to have Pastor Darren do a prayer for us to pray for, we're talking about praying for our backpacks, but really we're praying for you all to have a wonderful, amazing school year. And we look forward to you having your school year at your school, but also joining us for Sunday school and learning about God in our classes too. So we're excited to have you. All right, so after... Pastor Darren says his prayer, we're going to go to Sunday school and make little backpack tags so that you'll have those to put on your backpack and you can remember this prayer and that God is with you and that we all care for you. And I know you saw this morning, remember the little laundry basket that was full of all those neat supplies? And you heard them talking about how those are for people who really need them? Well, when you come back to sing in September, we're going to make welcome signs for those baskets so that when the people get their baskets, they will see that little card from you that says welcome and it'll make them feel happy and excited. So I can't wait to see you again when you come back and sing in September on the 29th. All right, I'm gonna pass it over to Pastor Darren and he's going to say a prayer for everybody. Yeah, hey. I am so glad you guys were here. You're bringing so much life this morning. Uh, singers, but also just regular folks bringing their backpacks. Uh, this is fun. So I am very glad to get to pray over you guys as you start uh, this new school year. So 
I like to pray with my hands together. You can pray however you want, uh, but let me pray for you here. Dear God, we are so excited for this group here. They are full of your heart and full of your love. And now they start in a new adventure, a new year at school, full of learning, full of friends, and full of play. God, let them know that they are awesome and that they are on their way to doing awesome things in this world. Uh, be everything for them. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Friends, go have fun today and all year long, for gosh sakes. Why not? You might as well have a good time. Yeah. And I was talking to Kiki already. She's got her TK backpack ready to go. gathered today. God lives among us in all the time. So why have you gathered today? When you scatter from this place, what will you take with you? Then come, let us worship together. We come to worship with rejoicing God, who lives, loves, and moves among us as we gather and as we are sent from this place. Amen. Hear this opening prayer. Holy one of mystery and power, there is no God like you in heaven above or in earth below, keeping covenant and steadfast love with all who walk before you with pure and upright hearts. Fill our lives with your glory. Give us the strength and the power in our lives and in our world. Amen. Please be seated. Just a, uh, a quick note, we're recognizing that our stream is not working right. So if you're getting texts or things from friends, let them know we're sorry, we're working on it, uh, um, and hopefully we'll get it running soon. 
Friends, we're going to move into a time of prayer, and so I invite you to uh, open up your hearts, open up your spirit, uh, that God might reach in and find you there. Let us pray. Mighty God, we want to follow you faithfully, but our strength ebbs and flows. Be our strength when we are weak. Be our faith when we face doubt. Be our guide when we start to wander away. Be our dwelling place when we feel most alone and remind us that your love is always enough. As always, we pray for those around us who are struggling with physical, mental, health issues, troubled relationships, uncertain employment, other forms of discomfort, other forms of dis-ease. Oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We think specifically of those in our community. David Schluter, who is recovering from a detached retina and some surgery to get that back into shape. Susanna Judd Newkirk, prayers for health issues, but especially for a stroke that she had just recently. Barbara Gosh has had COVID for the second time. We pray for a quick recovery. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. We think of other people in situations as we lift up our own private prayer thoughts. Come into these lives, Lord God, in a powerful way that helps those folks know your support, your nurture, and your healing. Oh, Lord, For those facing challenges and suffering around the world, our nation's continued problem of violence, the rise of COVID, the rise of fires, the rise of flooding. We pray for those areas of unrest and war and conflict in our world. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. And we think of those who have experienced particular moments of joy. This week, we are in prayer for all that have had vacations, times away, times for rest and renewal, excitement for family, for friends, for new adventures. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for our church as it continues in its ministries through these times and ask you to help in maintaining our effectiveness, but not just effectiveness, for vitality. May the good we do be pleasing in your sight. All of this, we pray in your son's holy name, joining in the prayer that he taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Today, our scripture comes from the message. John, the writer of the fourth gospel, is concerned with spiritual matters. For him, Jesus came to help us understand a deeper spirituality reality that we can access through him. With our passage today, we're left to try and understand what he may have meant when he called himself the bread of life. The scripture is from John chapter 6, verses 47 through 31. I am telling you the most solemn and sober truth now. Whoever believes in me has real life, eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna bread in the desert and died. But here is bread that truly comes down from heaven. Anyone eating this bread will not die ever. I am the bread, the living bread, who came down out of heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live, and forever. The bread that I present to the world so that it can eat and live is myself, this flesh and blood of myself. The word of God for the people of God. Well, may the words of my mouth be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. So I found out recently, before I left, that I might be uh, coming off a little younger than I am. In general, I like that. It's a good thing. Partly, I blame this big pulpit. (laughs) Some of you are old enough to remember Lily Tomlin on Laugh-In. Remember her sitting in that big rocking chair? I feel a little bit like that when I sit back here. Like, oh, this jacket's too big. I must be wearing my dad's. But um, it's been an interesting journey. I bring that up because I realized just recently that uh, I'm kind of ready to be a grandparent in my spirit, in my heart. Don't tell my kids. That's pressure. That's pressure. But this is just me. I was like, huh. And it surprised me that I felt this way, right? When you're young, the idea of wanting to be a grandparent, well, you may as well have just said, I want to be older, Right, which you don't generally say, you know, we don't necessarily want to get older, especially getting fast uh, at at a fast pace of getting older. So it surprised me that I was feeling that way because I didn't know that I would be that guy. You guys remember being a new parent? Do you remember the uh, diapers, the late night feedings? The loss of personal time. Do you remember that? (laughs) We didn't have any idea how to raise kids in those days. Am I right? Amen? Amen. That was for Garth. (laughs) Right? Those first few days, uh, you know, I, I, I just remember sitting there. Uh, We got to take my son Joseph home after a couple of days, and there we were in our house with a new life that we were responsible for for however many years and then parent to for the rest of time. And all I could think to myself is, shouldn't I have had to qualify in some way for this? (laughs) Right? Shouldn't I have had to pass a test to be able to be given a human life? that we were going to be taking care of. I remember when I was 16, I had to pass a test in order to drive, right? There was a a little bit of some obstacles that you had to get past in order to drive. And yet to have a kid, well, you just show up and do the thing and there you are. And I tell you what, maybe that's why we didn't have any idea. My wife would tell you she had an idea. She you know, figured it out. Me, 
I'm sitting there going, holy smoke, what are we doing here? So again, it kind of surprised me when I realized that I, I felt ready to be a grandparent, that I was excited about this possibility. Now, I don't think it was out of petty revenge. I don't think that was it. <laughs> Do, do, you, do, right, do you ever catch yourself feeling a little too good about your kids having to stay up late with their child? Right? You know, do you ever, you know, I, I don't think that was the main reason. I, I think it's just about this, this part of life, this living into the best things of life. I call it the good stuff. Do you remember that moment of realizing that there is something, there is someone that you love more than you love yourself? Do you remember that epiphany in your life, that profound sense of meaning, that profound sense of purpose for your life? Their pain is your pain. The desire to solve all of their difficulties and make their life perfect for them trying to make all of the pieces come together so their life can be less challenging and wonderful and beautiful. Folks, to me, that's, that's the good stuff. That's the big stuff, the deep stuff. It's kind of like you've gotten yourself into the deep part of the swimming pool and, and you're doing okay over there. You're making it work. You no longer can touch the ground, but it's all right. You've left that shallow end with all its comforts, all of its maybe even resting. It's nice. It's comforting. You like to hang out in that shallow end. But to never go into that deep end of life, I don't know, it just feels like you're cheating yourself. You're cheating yourself of the good stuff, the part where uh, life is a little more challenging a little more complex, and also a little more rewarding, a little more deep and meaningful. That's what I feel like with parenting or any real big adventure in my life, starting businesses, uh, uh, um, engaging in new relationships with people, starting new ministries, taking on a new church. We're taking on chances. We're learning some lessons, or we better learn some lessons, and we're growing. That's the good stuff. That's the deep, the deep stuff. And I think with grandparenting, I imagine that the feeling is going to grow exponentially. Now I'm not just walking this journey by myself, but I'm walking with others that I love who are walking it. Living life, walking into its depths and its complexities, more intentionally shaping who I am, or maybe in a Christian way, even becoming more the person God had always hoped that I would be. That, to me, is swimming in that deep end of life's pool. It's the good stuff. And I think this is what Jesus is trying to get across with this passage from John's Gospel. I know it's a little bit muddled, it's a little bit weird, but if you just give it just a little bit of a moment, I'm going to read a little bit more of it for you here. Uh, and uh, as Nancy mentioned, this is from the message. It's an interpretation of scripture by a pastor named Eugene Peterson that I really like. He did an interpretation that I feel really warms it up in a way uh, that doesn't distract from what uh, uh, the original writers were trying to get across. So I really like it, but listen to it here. I'm, I'm telling you the most solemn and sober truth now. Whoever believes in me has real life, eternal life, eternal life. That stuff that is forever. That stuff that in this life we can only get a little taste of because we are mortal, but th there's that little part of the divine inside of us, that we can get a taste of that eternal. Jesus tells us, I am the bread of life. Again, an interesting metaphor, right? I've preached on it once already. Linda preached on it once already. It's, it's meaningful enough, complex enough, that it, 
It's worthy of re-engaging that metaphor, the bread of life. What did Jesus even mean when he calls himself that? Your ancestors ate the manna bread in the desert and died. That's an interesting reference back to uh, the early Judeo-Christians uh, way back when they were escaping from oppression of the Egyptians. If you remember the story, they are able to escape and they end up out in the wilderness and for 40 years they're trying to figure out where they're going to land. They're trying to figure out how they're going to live. They're questioning whether or not God is still with them. They're questioning whether or not they're going to even be able to get the things they need. Water, food, shelter. And then God delivers unto them manna, bread. And they're able to eat. They're able to get the, get the sustenance that a body needs. But what's interesting is he says, the ancestors ate the manna bread in the desert and died. It makes it sound like God poisoned these poor people. Forty years in the desert wasn't enough. Now I'm going to fool you with some manna. That's not exactly what Jesus was trying to get across. He was trying to say that was just bread. Bread that you needed Bread that we have to have to survive, but it wasn't bread that was going to open you up to the eternal. It wasn't bread that reached beyond your mortality. This is what Jesus is trying to offer you. But now here is bread that truly comes down out of heaven. Anyone eating this bread will not die ever. I am the bread, living bread, who came down out of heaven. Again, he's not saying we're going to live forever forever. But he is saying, you can get this taste of what is eternal, right? Gospel of John, he wanted us to understand this spiritual realm that, that's, that's beyond us to a certain extent that we can only get kind of a taste of. And he's, he's trying to describe it. He's trying to get us on board with it. And that's where that eternal lay. Anyone who eats this bread will live and forever the bread that I present to the world so that it can eat and live is myself, this flesh and blood self. He's talking about the good stuff of life, the meaningful stuff of life, the stuff that matters. That's what Jesus is offering. He's pointing to. He says, let's, let's live the good stuff. In life, we talk about what makes it, what makes life worth it. What makes it meaningful? I think before I left, I talked a little bit about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, this progressive list of, of what humans need to survive. And if you remember, meaning and purpose was on that list. Right? We, we need that in order to feel whole, to feel like our life has value. Right? We need meaning. We need purpose. And that's what Jesus is talking about. It's talking about dipping into what really matters in life. For the Jesus that John describes, it's about more than surviving. It's about thriving. Thriving in this world and living beyond its mortality. Dipping into what is beyond the day-to-day -day and into the eternal. This is where we find meaning. And maybe even more importantly, this is where we find self. We figure out who God made us in the very beginning and we start being able to live that out. To me, as we come to understand a little more of what Jesus is trying to say here, it does beg the question, what, what is your deep end today? Where is uh, that adventure that depth, that meaning, is it pulling to you? As you sit in your resting spot, that comfort spot in the shallow end, what is beckoning to you from that deep end? Is there some learning that you've been putting off? Some growth that would stretch you and, and deepen your essence, your, your sense of who you are, your sense of what life is about? Maybe there's an experience you've been putting off. 
You know, something that you know is, you need to dig your teeth into that. That is something that would really uh, help you understand yourself better, help you understand God better. Maybe the deep end for you has more to do with some relationship, some deepening of relationship. Maybe there's someone in your life that you've built a wedge between you and that person. Is that the deep end that God is calling you to? To walk that journey to figuring out what it is that went wrong there or what needs to happen, where the healing is, where the hope is? I think that's what Jesus would hope we would walk away from this passage thinking. What is it that will deepen our lives? What is it that will connect us to that eternal I can tell you, as a pastor, I come from a particular stand, standpoint. I like to think that all deepening is spiritual. Whether you use the language or, or not, our spirit is our link to God. It's the part of us that does link to God. And any urging or beckoning to depth, meaning to love... To me, that's all God. That's all God at work in us. And it begs the question where God might be calling you in that spiritual sense. We had planned a ministry fair this Sunday. We were going to be out there talking about the fall and all the opportunities in the fall and ways to reach yourself, to serve, to live out mission. We realized we weren't quite ready, so we pushed it back to the 29th. So you're lucky. You get a whole week to ask yourself these questions. What is God calling you to? How is God hoping that you are going to evolve and, and deepen in your sense of yourself and of life? Does the deep end of your spirituality involve a question that you've wrestled with, a learning or a book that God is urging you to engage. If you come to the ministry fair, you might find out that there are others wrestling with that same question, interested in that same book or that same learning. Maybe the urging for you from that deep end from God is more about a ministry. A ministry that you feel like, oh, that, that fed me or that fed my children. I want to build that for others. I want others to figure out who God is in the same way I figured out who God is. Is God calling you to build that? To piece that together? Is there a justice issue that God has put on your heart? Our world is a blessing, a gift from God, but it is not perfect. And justice doesn't reign in every corner. Is God calling you to bring some of that? The ministry fair would be a chance to find and engage with others in that nudging. In the end, I just, I'm encouraging you to venture into that deep end this year. If we're going to believe Jesus in this sixth chapter of John, it might not just be how we fill the day. It could be a link to the eternity, to the meaning, to the purpose that we seek. The bread of life, the good stuff, as I call it. It could just be right around the corner for you. Amen? Amen. You're invited to share of your resources. We know that people give in many ways to the ministry of Christ through this church. 
If you are able to share of an offering this morning, we'd be appreciative. Please follow the instructions that you will see on the screen. Your generosity is important in helping us to serve God and neighbor. So give generously and be a part of what happens in people's lives through the congregation of the United Methodist Church of Westlake Village. God, we bring forth our offerings today. We are reminded of the enduring presence among us. With hearts full of gratitude, we offer these gifts as a symbol of our commitment to live lives of worship, not just within these walls, but in every moment of our existence. May our actions, our words, and our very lives show your glory, shining forth your love and grace to all we encounter. Amen.
So I am still somewhat new here, but uh, I am noticing that what happens to the acolytes between their lighting them and then they're taking them out is concerning. They come in all cute. I'm all about transformation, but. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> my friends, uh, it is good to be here. Uh, I'm obviously somebody who likes to have a laugh, and it sounds like you are too, so I feel blessed by that. Uh, and we have been blessed all morning with uh, this reinvigoration for the fall, with the choir coming, with the children's choirs here. I hope uh, you will continue to enjoy that reinvigoration with a hot dog over in Alton Hall. And uh, we can have some fellowship there to start the fall. So friends, I invite you to go into the world to become exactly who God is hoping that you will be because that is the blessing that Jesus promises to us. Amen? Amen. 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 <clears throat> 